So we got, uh, here we are. So we got red pills, got our Pez. These were fun last year, or a well, couple years ago. We did these a lot. They were pretty popular for all the people that need sugar. You just can't say no. Just say no. You got to go on a fast just a little bit. Just say no. I know it's hard to say no. I get it. I'm a human being too. That's the best part about us is the flaws. And that's what they're trying to, you know, eliminate. AI is trying to eliminate the flaws that we have. When you look at a picture nowadays, people run them through so many filters, you don't even know who you're talking to. All, all of the you know, images that you see on these dating sites or people who put Instagram up, they all use filters. They're not even real people. They don't want you to know what they really look like because they're afraid that you'll judge them for their impurities. And so that's what it seems like AI is kind of starting to, you know, do. That's the manifestation, I guess, probably of AI, is to just put a lacquer over everything. Kind of put like something over everything and the, remove all the blemishes. Because I need to sell my face because when you really get to know me, you're not going to like me. So you just might as well just look at my, my beautiful face. Must be rough to be a girl nowadays. Some of these alleged women anyways. Just dance in front of a camera. That's how you do activism. Hey, what's your activism? I dance in front of a camera. I proliferate guys who don't want to go out and seek a woman. So I think that's a lot of kind of the underlying nature of artificial intelligence is to, re to remove the, the human side, like the forgetfulness. I remembered, I remembered something in my room and I start to go up to get it. I get preoccupied literally within a minute. And then I grab something else that I needed that I didn't remember to grab before. And I go back downstairs and then I remember I had to go back up and get the other thing that I forgot to get. So imagine being a robot and never forgetting anything and never wasting time you're always effective you're always able to cut milli milliseconds off of time and you're so efficient and proliferant at everything you do gosh you're so reliable we should have billions of you so oh too bad bug got stuck in the tape and, uh, sorry, dude. Um, so AI is just kind of the perfect example. It's the Jesus Christ of electronics. And humans need to strive to be like a robot. So the best way that they've come up with is kind of a triple platter kind of uh, you know dessert main course uh, you know, appetizer type of deal because you got your food you have your sky and the air that you breathe and then you have your jabs so those are, those are the combinations that I've kind of kind of got to where what AI is trying to do is trying to kind of get underneath the human genome as if to say no we still want you to be human right we still kind of want you to be human because we want you to willingly choose to be a slave i mean what that's the best part i mean you can program a dog i mean you can become a great dog whisperer train thousands of dogs you know, teach them all sorts of stuff how to open doors and flush the toilet and go shopping for you it's great. But that's what the that's what AI wants to do to people. 
So it wants to create people, like little examples of, you don't want to follow that one guy, Yeshua, that guy that allegedly walked on water and lived a perfect life. He's not perfect. Humans can't be perfect. So it's impossible. Only AI and robots can be perfect. So you all will worship. <clears throat> here we go. So we got our signs here. Got this, but it's still put it right out there. After 4.30, we're gonna let it all hang out. All of your movies are CGI. It's all fake. Your whole life is fake. It's all fake reality. The only things that are real in a movie are the actors, and that's kind of debatable. Because they got deep fakes. So they could just get a guy who looks kind of like Chris Pratt with the new movie that just came out that, you know, you're watching McGregor yesterday break his ankle. How embarrassing. And all you hear about is t Tomorrow's End or whatever that movie is that I haven't watched yet. What they tell you to. It's an alien, another alien invasion movie. But did you die? So they could just fake everything. Everything is fake now. It's not even a real movie set, for crying out loud. It's like four green screens. And the actors, they could just, he could just look like Chris Pratt. And then just deep fake a, Chris Pratt's face on it. And then Chris Pratt gets the money. And then you're like, hey, dude, you want to just do my movies for me? Here, I'll give you like a tenth of how much I make and I can just sit around on my one percenter island away from all you numbskulls and make money. I mean, how easy is that? You watch the behind the scenes for these movies. It's not like I'm lying. They have like harnesses and green screens and they show you how the computer animation is all coming together. This place hates you. Hates us. Hates me. So, we're just going to come out and tell everybody about it then. We're going to spill the beans, if you will. I think we uh, reeled ourselves something in here. So I'm seeing Austin go out quite a bit. That's really good. Good to see uh, somebody has the time to do that. So that's really good. I don't think I've ever met Austin in person. Maybe he'll be at Flattoberfest. That's really good. Yeah, I've been uh, watched uh, pretty much his whole stream. I don't know Friday, I think, when he was at the Cherry Festival. So I watched pretty much all that. He's kind of got his uh, thing down. So that's good. Um, it's good that he gives time to interact. He's not afraid of that aspect of the the deal. It's kind of the whole package deal. 
can't just like talk and then just like, well, all right, bye everybody. Drop the mic. Yeah, you got to give opportunity to have a conversation. There's a lot of alien invasion movies out right now, if you're not aware. I've been kind of keeping up on movies and trying to just see what they're trying to spill out of, out there with people. Everything's an everything's an agenda for these people. Just pumping out these movies, continual advertisements for their movies to watch them, make sure that you watch them. Hey, if you want to be hip now with it and wow, make sure you watch Tomorrow's End. So then you can dialogue about it. What are you going to talk about when you see that movie? What are you getting out of that movie? What are you getting out of watching The Purge as being a normie believing that you live on a globe Earth? What entertainment value is there? How do you analytically look at a movie nowadays as a normie if you're a flat earther? It's impossible. You can't do it. My whole observation about the new Purge, uh, spoiler alert, is that they give this idea at the very end that everybody is going to rise up and do the right thing <laughs> together and, and actually physically harm other people if that's what it takes to make things right again. It's all fantasy. It's all storybook. It's not real. Nobody's going to stand up for anything. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about anything. Look. They're just sitting around. They're walking around the lake. They don't care about anything. Hi, how are you? I'm curious. Okay. What are you curious about? Sure, yeah, well, uh, what do you, I got four signs. What's the most provocative? Okay. Trump? Oh yeah. Okay, so but but did you die? Yeah, did you? Okay. Name something. Name something. Name something that you did that you felt like. Whew. Yeah, I know it's difficult nowadays. Yeah. Kind of away from family and kind of on your own type of thing? Yeah, well I actually was married. I got married. Oh, you did? When I was, it was a month after my 18th birthday. A strapping young man from to high school? A, to a guy that I only knew for three months. And he's in the airport. Oh, okay. And when we went to Italy, and I was just 18 years old. How old was he? Okay, so he's in the in it for a little while, seasoned vet. Yeah, you know. well, okay. and he had, you know, when you're in the military, you at least get a paycheck. Yeah, right. Free travel expenses. Yeah. Right. Well, and then we traveled all over Europe. Are you still currently married? No. That was very long time ago. So, did you, you get married when you're 18? It's not likely that when you're 47 before that you're going to have a lot in common. Well, you know, you got to grow together, though, right? Well, yes, absolutely. Right. you got to keep your lines parallel with each other. And I, you're so smart for a kid. Right here, just the plow. I, I was married for 19 years. Mm -hmm. So, it's definitely just like, you know, yeah. I had two kids. But did you die? Um, no. No. There were times. It was there. a lot of adventure, I'm sure. Yeah, Ups and downs. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I moved here from Boston. That was like... God, what did I do now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it was like Boston to here, and we had no friends and mm -hmm. no income. I thought I'm a realtor. Yeah. So oh, you are. getting, learning to be a realtor in a city where you have no 
connections. I don't have any connections either. It's interesting that you say that. What do you think about the virtual tours thing? I hate it. Do you? I refuse to use it. And you really? It's interesting that you would ask me that. Because I, I live in a, um, a high rise built by Morning Park. Mm -hmm. And um, so most of my business, I'm kind of lazy now because I do it all the time. Sure. I'm not lazy. But, um, but I, you know, I've been very successful in that. And, but the virtual tours, to me, and I think that a lot of realtors are like this, is that being in a space is really important. You sure. can look at pictures all over. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with what it's like when you're in the space. Mm -hmm. And so to, to take a couple of people and take them to, uh, to look at a condo in a place where they see the picture online and it's this amazing staged place, and then they get in there and there's no furniture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, I refuse to, to work like that. Really? Yeah, because, because I think it's important to be there. Isn't that a niche though? Isn't that a new niche that's coming in because of kind of the environment right now? And it was coming in before, right? But now it is really kind of an interesting niche. And to be honest, the reason why I brought it up is because I have that very thing. And I actually just printed off business cards and I have them being mailed to me at yeah. the end of this week. Yeah. And my business that I just came up with, because I want to do virtual tours, would be called Our Perspective. Because I can get it done within an hour, format all the videos, and give the person actually a flash drive, a four or eight gigabyte flash drive, with the files so then they can do with those as they will. And I charge half the price that these companies would. And I yeah. would do it. Yeah, so and, and I just wanted to get your idea. Well, what you know, again, field it, looks like. you're coming from a different place. Like, are you a millennial yet? How old are you? Forty. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, May second, eighty-one. Oh, I'm seventy-four. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, well, I'm okay. So, so then, like, what we're finding in my age group is mm -hmm. that the millennials are very different. Like, I've been a realtor since nineteen. So I've been in the for quite a while, but I've been in a, a space where a lot of my clients are been my age, but you know I've been doing this for several years. Yeah. But it's interesting, and I just had a situation where the guy was obviously a millennial, mm. and his view it was really fun to interact with him because his view first thing he said was, well, I might want to move in about a year or so, and then I'll have to get back to that end. And people my age, and even a little bit of we didn't, that wasn't how we lived. We bought <laughs> yeah. something because you we wanted there. to be there. Yeah. And we wanted to have kids, mm -hmm. and you know, we wanted to be stable, but I moved 17 times. So what I just said is like that. <laughs> well, like <laughs> well, you were a military guy and everything. Were you? Right? No, yeah. your husband, yeah. right, military and stuff. So that was... Yeah. Um, and, you know, and we lived in that environment in Europe for mm. three years. We lived in two different places. Oh. We could travel. We had, we had a Volkswagen. Mm. We had one of those old vans. No, the the bug. The bug. Okay. And so I had a friend come over from Ontario. I'm from Ontario, and she came over, and then four of us, two guys and two women, got in a Volkswagen, and we traveled all over Europe. Fun. And it was really something, you know. And the one guy, my my husband is pretty easy to get along with, but his friend was pretty. <laughs> and, and so it was like, oh, Jim, we're just going to leave you here if you don't stop. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, we, we made out, you know, figuring out how to get along in that really small space. Yeah. And then, like, I did things that were really adventurous where we went to Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. And we were watching the changing of the mm -hmm. And my husband and Jim decided to wander around a little bit and about that time I just
excited face dropped dead right on the <laughs> sidewalk. Oh my. And so my my friend Maureen had to leave me laying there with two people watching that I didn't get stepped really yeah. go find my husband. Oh my. And it turned out I was pregnant. So it was, you know, just an unexpected thing. But then of course for the rest of the trip it was like, oh yeah, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the kids are sick. Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. you can't drink beer. Mm -hmm. It's just like Germany, that's totally has killed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure your child is fantastic now. Oh yeah, yes, I, I have two. My son actually was in the Air Force for 20 years. Okay. He was in the Thunderbirds, so he was really fun. Mm -hmm. and because the Thunderbirds travel all over the world, mm -hmm. and you get invited to the governor's places and all of the high people because it is all over the world. The show goes. And so that was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Now your husband, uh, you said you were married 19 years? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you figure there were some things that he didn't tell you that he did at work? Or that like, he was like, hey, I'm going to go hang out with the guys, and he was really doing like, you know, military stuff? No. No? No, not at all. Do you think he was he, pretty open with you about Yeah. Everything? Well, and we had, let's see, we had our first child. was a, an only child. Okay. And um, no, it was he didn't do something like that. He never you don't think he ever signed a non disclosure agreement and was like, hey, you know what? Like, you can't talk about this stuff even to your wife or children. Oh, oh so you're talking about the military. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um I I don't think he was what well, he was in a field where at one point he was doing refrigeration and mechanical things mm -hmm. like that. My son, on the other hand, mm. if you had this conversation with my son, you would come away with absolutely no information. <laughs> he won't even tell me. Tight-lipped, huh? What he's a good he boy. <laughs> he's a good boy. Well, and now he works, he's been a civilian for a few years. He works for Lockheed, he's but young. Lockheed is in the, um, they do airplanes and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So he they do space, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tell me yeah. what he does. Interesting. So, yeah, and, and then... <laughs> <coughs> this is the really scary thing, and since you're a stranger, I guess I can tell you. But I just was at his house in uh, Orlando, mm -hmm. and he has a room. And he, it, it is, this room had a big combination on the push button lock. And it's like, oh. what was this? And he said, oh, come on, Mom, I'll show you. And he opens the door. I mean, it, does, it takes a lot to shock me. To wow you. He had a whole room. The big automatic, you know, the military so ones. Mm. Um, oh, he has thousands of dollars He's ready. of guns and there's big racks in his room. And he's been my son for 53 years, so I figured, uh, you know, having a <laughs> He's got a hobby. Probably. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, everybody's changing right yeah. now. And pure conscious. And it's Come on, we got to beat them down. Everybody's changing. Everything that's going on is changing. Yeah. And people are, like my son just got a divorce, a second divorce. And he's, I can't even see it in him that he's reevaluating things. And he has a son who is gay, which was like, oh my God, you know, we're not going to be able to get marked through this one. Oh, wow. But it's in it a while for him. But he has a wonderful kid. Mm. changed a lot too. Um, this is what I do. I talk about how outer space isn't real. Oh my god, I have to introduce you to my sister in Oregon. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, she lives in Oregon mm -hmm. and she has a house in Thunder Bay and um, she sends me all every okay. day. She sends me tons of these things. So I'm used to that. She's, I don't know if you've ever heard of Rapsa. It's um, a guru kind of guy mm -hmm. in um, Oregon. Okay. And so they're kind of buying into a lot of that stuff. And, you know, and, and she's... Is she going to, like, move to a, like, a little 
communion or something like no, that? No, but she, she goes there often. Okay. Yeah, because she's in Oregon and Rebel. <laughs> She goes there quite often. What do you think about that? Like a bunch of people who are like-minded, getting together and growing their own food and living together like that. Oh, I, there's all kinds of people. I know. In fact, I have... Other than like Amish, obviously. Like, yeah, you know, the but more... I, I actually have a friend who's her birthday today. I guess we're going to see her But they, um, there's two people in the back group that live in, um, Sedona. And they live in, um, what do you call it? You know where people go to see to live. I forgot what you call it now. But, and they yeah. live there, and they live a very different life. Mm -hmm. And they they moved to um, Spain, and they lived in Israel, and um, they lived, you know, in, in uh, all kinds of different situations. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Bill Gates is one of the largest landowners of potatoes that is sold to McDonald's. Oh, really? Yeah. 